I'm Robert. Uh, this is part two of Warniki's Encephalopathy uh, 101. I want to encourage you to uh, not watch this if you are a patient alone. Stop the video. Don't proceed. Uh, if you're a patient of Warniki's, please watch this with the company of a loved one, preferably someone that will help you recover from uh, this illness. Uh, if you're someone that's uh, seeking information how to help uh, Warnicki's victim, uh, watch away. Uh, I hope you watch part one before part two. This is a continuation. Uh, last thing I believe I talked about was us being discharged from the hospital and me uh, thinking that that was the recovery state from the disease, from the illness. Uh, the Once you start getting thiamine, the softening of the brain, the melting away is stopped. It, the brain begins to firm back up. And from that point on, uh, once your thiamine count gets over a certain number, I don't know what the magic number is, whether it's 50, 75, 100, 125. Nonetheless, if you're getting thiamine daily through an IV or through the capsule or through the fact that your liver has recovered, uh, you're, you're healed from Warnicke's. From that point on, you have to learn how to live with the damage that was caused by the Warnicke's. Basically, you have a brain damaged patient. Uh, my wife's brain firmed up from my perspective in, in a few days. Uh, a couple of weeks after we was discharged from the hospital, we went to the gastrologist liver doctor. He said my wife's liver was recovering well. So a couple weeks later, her liver was functioning close to normal. Probably a few weeks or a month later, her liver had fully recovered from the uh, toxicity of the alcohol and it was functioning Redelivering thiamine to the brain. So from that point, I, I think we can probably stop taking the thiamine tablets, but we didn't. We continued to take thiamine for uh, probably eight or nine months before I finally said, heck, I'm not taking these separate thiamine capsules any longer. My wife takes a multivitamin now every day that has 1,666% of the daily recommended dosage of thiamine. Her liver's recovered in good shape. I don't think she's suffering from thiamine deficiency anymore. She shows a very physical, healthy uh, being. Uh, we are just suffering from the damage that was caused during that short period of time that she had Wernicke's. My wife is now classified as a dementia patient. Uh, she has an average memory of about an hour. After an hour, 80% of what comes to her is lost and she simply can't remember what happened an hour or two ago. My wife's memory comes in waves. Once a month, once every other month, she has like a 30 second memory where she can't remember things for 30 seconds. I mean, nothing. She can ask you the same question 200 times in an hour. It's, it's brutal. On a normal day, it's about an hour. On a good day, I've seen her retain as much as 80% of the information coming to her for to six hours which means that she almost functions like a normal person. The strange thing about my wife's uh, mental brain damage is that she has almost all of her intellect intact and she's very bright. So her sickness is very deceptive. I like to kind of tell myself or remind myself that I'm married to the smartest four-year-old on earth. My wife is as smart as any 45 year old person, but she has the physical day to day execution abilities of a four year old. Example, 
A four-year-old won't do laundry. A four-year-old will often not flush the toilet. A four-year-old will seldom do the dishes. A four-year-old doesn't try to cook meals or eat the right thing. A four-year-old doesn't bathe themselves without coaxing or physical restraint. Uh, that's the state that my wife is in. However, intellectually, I can take my wife anywhere and she can talk to all adults on any level. As long as they're not talking about current events, they will not know or have any clue that anything is wrong with my wife. She's very humorous. I've learned that humor is a way that people with short-term memory loss uh, cope and deceive the people that they're around that something is wrong with them. So uh, very enjoyable to be around. And uh, she lives a wonderful life. However, the first six months was very severe in trying to stabilize her. And she lives primarily by emotions. And she has a, 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 a time problem. She has a bad sense of time. So if more than a couple of hours go by, she doesn't know if four hours have gone by or three days. Example, if I leave the home for more than four hours, she doesn't know if I've been gone for four hours or three or four days. She has verbally expressed that to me. I came home one day, asked her how she was doing, this, that, and the other. She was cold, closed down. When I probed, she lashed out and said, look, you leave here four or five days at a time. I don't know where you've been or who you've been with. I was only gone six hours. It blew me away. But I learned from that point that I can't be going away from home for longer than four hours without suffering the consequences. Now, what you need to do is assess how much brain damage your loved one has experienced. Uh, the first way to assess that is to get them stabilized emotionally. It took six months of intense time and for lack of a better term, ass kissing. I kiss my wife's behind day in and day out, uh, uh, putting no stress or pressure or demands on her at all for six months before she finally broke through, turned that corner to where I can assess what kind of condition she was in. If your loved one is in a panic strip, stricken state like mine was, it may take months to have that breakthrough. I've heard of a lady uh, living through that for 15 years before her husband had a breakthrough. This is not a short-term uh, solve uh, uh, remedy. If you were fortunate enough to get your loved one to the hospital before too much damage was done, they could have pretty much a full recovery. But I'm just going to urge you to not be fooled by their intellect. They could still be dangerous. These patients uh, normally die from accidental deaths. They burn houses down. They wreck cars. They starve to death. They die of pneumonia because they won't get out of bed for weeks and days on end. Uh, they do not need to be left alone uh, really for any amount of time at all. I had to work to try to help make ends meet. And uh, so I left my wife alone anywhere from two to six hours at a time. I would turn off the oven so she couldn't try to cook while I was gone. And yes, she did start fires. So there's a lot of danger involved and there's a lot of uh, care that needs to be given. So if you're not able to give that care, try to find that person, a loved one that can care for them or have them placed in a medical facility that can care for them and watch after them, uh, uh, just depending on how much brain damage is done. My philosophy is you have a certain amount of days to get that person into the hospital to save your life. Uh, the first few days of the attack, they can have full recovery. Uh, the next few days, uh, days four through six, you're going to have some brain damage. 
if you don't get your loved one in the hospital within six days, they'll have such severe brain damage that they will probably always have physical disabilities and severe mental disabilities. And if you wait one day too long, they'll probably have so much brain deterioration that they'll slip into a coma and probably never come out. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post me a question or send me a message. Uh, from what I've learned from the neurologist, there's really no uh, nothing they can do about brain deterioration uh, short of you know what I've done and what others have done is patiently wait for their loved one to emotionally stabilize so they can assess where where they are. Basically, my wife is a dementia patient. Uh, she suffers short-term memory loss that uh, in a year's time hasn't uh, recovered, but she is so happy and enjoyable to be with that it's just something I've chosen to live with as, as long as I can take care of her. So if you have any questions, ask. Again, uh, it's Warren Nicky's Encephalopathy 101. I uh, hope you have uh, a, a great day and, and uh, please do reach out for support for not only yourself but for uh, your loved one with the illness and, uh, and, and don't be afraid to ask someone for help because you'll need it. Have a great day.